today we'll be taking a look at Forza Horizon 3 on the Potato Masher and the Potato Masher Pro. In case you don't know, the Potato Masher is a series where I compare a cheap PC against the PS4. There's also the Potato Masher Pro, which competes against the PS4 Pro. The goal isn't to pick on either console, but to compare and contrast the platforms to show you what's possible with a budget PC. There are a lot of games that you have requested that I test, and I'll probably never be able to get to all of them, but if I take a few of those games and just take a brief look at how the Masher and Masher Pro perform, I can make a short video where I might not have been able to make anything before. That means for these shorter videos, called Tater Tots, I won't be comparing them against a console. Links are in the description if you want more information about either the Potato Masher or Potato Masher Pro. Let's get to it. I posted a video when Forza Horizon 3 first released, reviewing its performance and doing as much of a comparison with the Xbox One version as I could. The non-stop frame rate drops and overall very poor performance led me to recommend not buying the game if you had a budget PC. After over 8 months and many patches, I've gotten a ton of comments from you guys saying the game has really been improved and I should take another look. So, how is it on the masher? Improved, yes, but still not great. At 1080p and medium settings, the masher can sustain a consistent 30 FPS lock in rural areas or light races. However, in busy races, the frame rate drops into the low to mid 20s. It still isn't spiking or having the inconsistency it did at launch, but it's not great. Dropping to low settings except for 16x anisotropic filtering does help, but the frame rate is still pretty bad. However, the frame rate is generally higher than it is at medium settings, like you'd expect. The low video memory warning flashes on screen pretty frequently, even though the VRAM wasn't maxed out at any point according to the desktop view of MSI Afterburner. I can't get it to display in-game for any Universal Windows platform games. Even dropping to 900p and low settings doesn't completely lock the frame rate. It is at 30 most of the time, and drops are rare, but come on. Low settings, 30 FPS, and sub 1080p resolution? Not to be rude to the Xbox One, but that sounds like most Xbox One games, except even the X-Bone runs this game at 1080p. Aliasing and pop-in are pretty terrible, the lighting is flat and uninteresting, and this overall beautiful game is handcuffed to a terrible presentation. I have some theories as to why this is, but first, let's check out how the Master Pro runs the game. A lot of you are probably feeling pretty disappointed right now. Well, get ready to be surprised. At 1080p and completely maxed out, the Masher Pro runs in the high 50s in coastal towns, which is typically one of the most demanding areas in the game. Dropping to high settings makes the frame rate very consistently 60, although still with occasional drops of only 2 to 3 FPS. Compared to the regular Masher and the Xbox One, it's an entirely different experience. The Forza series, to its credit, has always been perfectly playable at 30 FPS, in my opinion. The motion blur at the higher settings is very good, and the game doesn't feel like a huge compromise like most fast-moving games are when you can't hit 60. However, hitting 60 FPS combined with the beautiful visuals is a great experience. There's still a little shadow flickering and slight aliasing shimmer on some objects, but the overall presentation is fantastic. The lighting is neutral and realistic at times, and painterly and hyper-stylized at others. The cars show a loving amount of care and attention to detail, and I really can't find anything to complain about. At 1440p and medium settings, the frame rate is a little worse, usually hovering in the 50s and occasionally locking at 60. Just for fun, I dropped the settings to very low and unlocked the frame rate, and at 1440p, the Master Pro sustained 70 to 95 FPS, but of course the pop-in was terrible and the lighting was back to being flat and boring, so I quickly moved on to 4K. Yes, even though the regular Masher struggles with 1080p, the Master Pro locks at an immovable 30 FPS at native 4K and very high settings. All the nice things I said about high settings at 1080p still apply, just much sharper and more detailed and with a slight bump to shadows and reflections. YouTube isn't going to do this game any justice, but at 4K it just looks incredible. Now I know 30fps just won't be acceptable to some of you, so yes, I did try it at 60. At medium settings, the car customization screens are still glitchy, but better. Driving through cities, the Master Pro held at around 40 to 50fps. An improvement over 30, but not locked. At low settings, you definitely start to notice the compromises in the visuals, including pop-in and lighting work. I figured driving at 260 miles per hour was a good way to highlight how bad the pop-in can look, which still isn't terrible. The frame rate is slightly better at 45 to 55 FPS, but again, not a lock 60. Even dropping to 1870p, the frame rate gets very close to, but never locks at 60. No one component is maxed out, but the game still isn't incredibly well optimized and it shows. Still, the Xbox One X likely will be 30 FPS if it's capable of native 4K in this game, and the Master Pro can do that now with every option maxed out. The 
GTX 760 in the Masher is a mid-range card from a few generations ago. I don't believe Nvidia intentionally sabotages their older cards, but I have noticed that some newer games seem to run quite a bit worse on the 760 than they do on a newer card that isn't much better, like a GTX 950. My theory is that the GTX 760 has too many old architectural decisions in it that just don't scale well to the particular optimization issues with Forza Horizon 3, and that has happened with a tiny handful of other games. The GTX 1060 in the Masher Pro is much faster, yes, but it is also from the current GPU generation, and I believe it has much better driver support. So, while the Masher definitely, definitively loses to the Xbox One in this game, I would bet that the Masher Pro equals or exceeds the Xbox One X at the same game. We'll see when the X1X releases, but for now, the Masher Pro delivers another real 4K gaming experience for less than $500. Well, unless the digital currency mining craze has driven 1060s up in price again, but you know what I mean. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel or supporting me on Patreon if you enjoy my content. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.